So how did you end up in the U.S.? How did that happen? Just wanted to come, and I had an opportunity to go to BYU, and I— BYU Provo? Yes, Provo. Okay. You just applied and— I did apply. I had a sponsor, and unfortunately, I came right when the— was it 2008 and nine when the— Everything the economy collapsed, mm -hmm. and so I ended up losing uh, my opportunity because there's no more money. From BYU? Uh, no, from my sponsor. What does that mean, a sponsor? Oh, it means a person somebody I knew was willing to pay for me to go to school. Oh, nice. Yeah. Someone from Ukraine or from uh, from America. From How'd you I meet think they here? lived in Orem. One of like parents of one of the elders. We're like, oh, yeah, we would like, love to pay for you to go to school here. Like, that sounds like a great idea. Like an elder you knew? Yeah. Who was a missionary in your mission? Yeah. Well, that's a great opportunity. Yeah. It was really fun. They they were, like, they took me to Las Vegas. They, like, I, they showed me around. They took me to Park City. Like, that was so fun. Yeah. So that was, like, my first experience in America. Okay. So the family of one of the missionary, Mormon missionaries in Ukraine from the U.S. said, hey, we'll bring you here and sponsor you. Yeah. That gave you a chance to come here. You applied, you got in. Yeah. But then financially. Couldn't do it. It fell through. Yeah. Which was fine. And then I ended up in Texas and I, I ended up in Texas and I ended up getting new sponsors, which was like a total miracle. Like I did not think that could happen. And there's like amazing people. And I, by then. Mormons again? Yes. And yeah. these are just Mormons willing to kind of pay your rent, pay your food. Yeah. You yeah. Could, could you get a job here? Like, yeah. You could work. I did. I did. Okay. Yeah. I definitely worked. But you were on a student a visa? Bit. Student yeah. visa? So that was really, f that was fun. Um, I ended up going to Austin Community College, mm -hmm. which was a fantastic experience. Uh, I was working downtown, going to Austin Community College as a uh, campus downtown, and then I got into UT, University of Texas at Austin, which at the time was top 25 schools in America. Yeah. And I was so proud of myself. Like, here I am, this, like, little girl from Ukraine. Like, you know, I'm, I just felt like I gained some status in my own eyes. I was like, oh, I'm so proud of myself. I did this. Yeah, yeah it's a great school. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I went there. So UT, I only went there for a semester as a... Like, I transferred political science to political science, right? So I was doing political science for two and a half years. And unfortunately, what happened again is I ran out of money. Mm. And so I had to, um, like, just work a lot, try to pay off what I, like, whatever debt I had. It wasn't very much, but I had some. And um, I think that was, like, a couple of years that was going on. When, and, when you came to... Texas to Austin, did you attend a Mormon ward there? Yes. Was it a student ward or a family ward? Student. What was that like? Coming to America, what was coming to America like and what was coming to an American Mormon ward like for you hmm. from Ukraine? Was it different? Yeah. Yeah, very different. Well, Like you don't really have much of an accent. At all. So did you have one when you came? Did you sound? I think so. Yeah, definitely. So I speak the way the person is speaking to me speaks. Mm -hmm. So if you had an English accent, give me half an hour. I start speaking the way you do. Okay. Like that's just how it happens for me. Mm -hmm. um, and but did you already know English before you came or? Right. So I had like English linguistics, right? So I already had a very, very good background in okay. English. I was fully blown translator. Oh, by the time I got here, like I knew how to translate the back in school. Like I got, I left high school, like being able to translate biology, technical mm, yeah. chemistry, right. like everything. Like okay. there's, n yeah, I was so the language good. you had down. Yeah. Okay. What was it like culturally to come here? Horrible. Why? Very different. What? It's so different. And that's so shocking for somebody who's very young uh, you know, 21 doesn't sound like that young, but it, I was very, very young. So food, oh my gosh, did not get it. it was, tomatoes didn't smell like tomatoes. What? What am I eating? I don't know. Like, I ate eggs for weeks because I didn't know what else I could eat because it didn't look like food to me. Okay, what's food like in Ukraine? <laughs> what's food like in Ukraine? Okay, 
When I say salad, you what do you imagine? Lettuce, carrots, tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, right. peppers, okay. some type of salad dressing. Okay. What do I imagine? What I imagine is a lot of different boiled, cooked vegetables cut into really tiny pieces with probably some kind of mayo together. Oh, like a like a potato salad. Like a potato salad. Only even like smaller pieces. Like very, you know, like... And what vegetables would be in that? Um, potatoes. Maybe potatoes, peas, carrots. Could be like a tiny bit of onion for taste. Eggs, like you know, like just different. It depends on and what we're talking about. Is that a goulash? About. Is that what goulash is or not? I've no, heard that word. I'm I'm thinking more like Olivier is what I'm thinking of right mm. now. Or like, you don't like if mm, there's a um, the salad with beets that doesn't that has like just you like sprinkle beet it. salad. Yeah, you sprinkle it with just um, olive oil. So that's what I think when I think of salad and food. To like it, it's not green and it doesn't have leafy vegetables mm -hmm. and it doesn't have any sweet sauce or any sweetness to it at all mm. okay yeah so just the idea of what food is is very different so did you guys like not have cheeseburgers or like nope didn't know what that tacos was. fried chicken i did try tacos pizza. and oh. i did try pizza before but it wasn't like that's not my first thought of when i think of food so some of the most normal meals back in ukraine would have been what borscht Olivier. Borscht. borscht is what? Borscht is a red beet soup. By the way, borscht does not have a T at the end. We don't say borscht. We say borscht. So people should stop spelling it with a T at the end. What did I do? Did I borscht? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Okay, I'm just okay. like in general for so people. So it's a beet stew. Yeah. Okay, what else? Um, for your normal meals. Green borscht, which has shavit, which is sorrel in it. That's like normal. You know, and soups. Like we're, we just kind of make up soups on, on the go. And pelmeni, which is um, like meat inside dough with, that's boiled. Yeah. Okay. What do you have for breakfast in Ukraine? Um, eggs could be, um, m for me, most often I had buckwheat in the morning. And n no like sugar or, or like milk or stuff like that. Just like buckwheat with some butter. And it's, we don't do, at least we didn't do at the time, um, sweet breakfast. Okay. That's not a thing. What about sandwiches? Yeah, our sandwiches are open, open bread sandwiches. So there's only like you put a bread and then like cheese and some kind of kalbasa on top, and you don't put bread on top of it. There's just like this is it. Did you say kalabasa? Kal mm -hmm, kalbasa. Is that, is that cabbage? Kal uh, kalbasa is a meat. It's oh, okay. like a meat product. Okay. Like, you know, have you seen Polish kielbasas? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's as close as you can get. Like Bologna. Let's think Bologna. Okay. There, there you go. That would be close enough. There's a Russian store really close to here. So to this studio. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. So did you, so you didn't like the food when you got here? No, I didn't like it at all. Do you like it now? <laughs> yes, I like it now. Now do you prefer the food here to? I still Ukraine? cook my own food all the time. Ukrainian food? Yes, I cook, like I always Always have Ukrainian food in the fridge. Okay. Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, buckwheat. So food, I have buckwheat at home. Yeah. So the food was a disaster. What else culturally? People driving. I very quickly realize my back is hurting because I'm getting in and out of the car all day instead of walking or taking public transportation. Okay. That was tricky. Um, the distances of everything was very hard to get used to. Yeah, um, Texas is so sprawling. It's so spread yeah, out. Yeah. But, okay, but even in Utah, like that, like I'm even thinking like my first couple of months in Utah, I struggled that you can't just walk outside and go to a store. You have miles to cover. And then it's not like you can just go to a store and get everything. There's like all these different options. I think options was a problem too. Too many options. Overload. Yeah. Okay. Another interesting thing may be that um, I would walk, uh, just go outside and walk, and people would wave and say hi to me. And my reaction, super rude as it is now, but at the time, I was just like, why are you waving at me? Like, do you, like I just like, do you know me? Like, I just thought they were so creepy and rude. I didn't understand why people were waving and saying hi to me. <laughs> so that was a big shock, like... I had to have a lot of people for a long time explain to me why people wave and say hi to each other on the street. 
that was mm. very, very, very strange. And I did not like it. I just felt like I was being personally attacked. Like they're like, yeah, like they're um, somehow they're not minding their own business. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What about dating? Dating came later. Dating came later. Dating, so you didn't, you didn't date at first? No. Mm -mm. I did go on a date with somebody here in Utah, which was really fun. We went ice skating to uh, Temple Square. I had never ice skated in my life before. So I remember that date really well because that was like my first experience ice skating, my first experience seeing the temple. Yeah, that was really fun. But I never, but I didn't like date, date until some years later. And why not? I was moving around a lot. I ended up living in Virginia for a year. Um, and also I did try to date Mormon and let's just say I didn't think that there was a lot of options that were interesting. Why not? Just nobody that I was really attracted to. Mm. I also thought that I was a little preoccupied with like figuring out what's next. And so dating wasn't exactly something that I cared to, to do. Cause you're trying to figure out how to, you wanted to stay here. Yeah. And you yeah. didn't want to have to go back. And so you're trying to right. figure out how to. Yeah. I was just busy. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to work and I wanted to get used to this country and dating is a lot to ask for of a person who's trying to figure out their emotional state. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there. Yeah. And so I, it wasn't until I got to Dallas, Texas that the opportunity presented itself and I had the time and I had the, yeah, like just kind of things came together and I ended up dating somebody for a while. Yeah, and that was my, f I think that was my first, like, boyfriend, boyfriend, and also my first, and I'm pretty sure that was the only Mormon boyfriend I ever dated. Ever? Ever. Oh, wow. I okay. think so. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so how many years were you here before you went to BYU-Idaho? About eight. Oh, wow. And so what, what are you doing in that time? <clears throat> I mean, on and off school, lot working traveling yeah just living just living yeah that's it and did you were you enjoying it yes some of it yeah <laughs> i mean that's life you enjoy some of what you don't other other things i liked living in austin it was really fun um met lots of wonderful friends like have incredible connections to austin the people there hate the heat i'm very happy not to be in texas anymore because of that one reason but love the city love the energy um yeah i, I miss it in that way and, what, what was your relationship with the church like during those eight years i was never inactive the way we talk about activity and inactivity in the church meaning active meaning you're visible inactive you're invisible so I was always active. I was always visible, but I wasn't actually active when it comes to spirituality. So I loved going to Institute. Uh, I had an amazing teacher there. In Austin? Yeah. Brother Johnson was fantastic. Love him. Um, he was one of those people who, like made you really think. And so that was very exciting for me. It's like I could go somewhere and just like ponder some things in my life. Um, I had a really good job or a couple different jobs and I had fun and I had a fantastic friends. ended up living on Riverside for a while, which is for those who know Austin, it's pretty close to downtown. So I had access to a lot of things, you know, South by Southwest was really fun. Like we have um, Austin City Limits. That's all these music and yeah. In film, you know, I met some celebrities there. Like I had, I had a full good life. I was definitely not shy uh, shying away from partying drinking like i never did drugs and i still haven't done them because i'm not too curious about it um but everything else yeah it was the world was my oyster so you weren't you weren't super mormon i guess once you got here right no i wasn't super mormon even then <laughs> yeah okay so any, any, before we talk about BYU, Idaho, any other big thing, life events happen other than just kind of survive, surviving here for eight years, mm. trying to make it. Well, I had an interesting run in with a bishop. So <clears throat> I once walked in to like talk to a bishop and I think I was invited to talk to a bishop. I didn't really care to talk to him. And, 
um, he told me, and this still sounds so creepy, he said to me, um, I have seen you walk into the sacrament meeting room, and the way you walk does not have enough Jesus in it. What? And I remember thinking, don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, so I was just like, okay, like, do you care to explain? And pretty much without saying it, he told me uh, that I, my walk is too sexual, mm. that I needed to calm myself down and walk like a woman of Christ, that I needed to put a, you know, God into myself. <laughs> and he just like gave me this whole speech. And then he also told me that he gave the same speech to one of his daughters and that she did change her ways and she became more faithful woman of the church mm. and not so whatever. And I, so I was sitting there and I remember thinking, so this grown man is telling me that he is watching me as I walk into a sacrament meeting and it's too hot mm -hmm. and that I shouldn't be like the whole, like that was so weird. Yeah. I think that was one of the moments when, well, first of all, I never talked to a bishop after that. Um, and that was one of the moments where I realized, you know what? I'm not going to let patriarchy dictate my sexuality. Like y you can't, you can't as a man of any s status, but especially as a bishop, tell a young woman that her walk is not appropriate. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, why in the world would you go to BYU Idaho? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> legitimately good question, legitimately. Um, I was in a moment of kind of crisis, not kind of, it was a crisis. I was like, okay, like I really need to finish school. I'm like 28, I think. Like I just, what the heck? I need to finish school. This is crazy. Just because your jobs weren't paying well or? No, because I really wanted a degree. Okay. Like I really, like that was like, I want a degree and I want to make money off of that degree. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why I was so degree oriented. I still am. I think it's super important. And so I walked into a church building. Uh, I don't remember what I was there for, but I just needed to walk in and give something to somebody and just walk out. And on my way out, I saw older couple and they were just chatting and I was like, oh, like, what are you guys doing here? And they said, oh, we're Pathway missionaries. And I was like, cool, like what's Pathway? And I wasn't really asking them because I was that curious. I was just kind of killing time because that was like at five seconds that I walked in and did whatever I needed to do. And so I was just kind of like out the door. So I started talking to them. They explained to me what, what it was. And I realized that I need to do it. Like in that moment, like it was five minutes and I signed up on the spot. And I, um, with, it was like a month later that I started Pathway. Okay, and what year was that? This is three years ago. Three, three and a half years ago. So Pathway, tell us what Pathway is. Some people yeah. won't know. Pathway is, well, right now it's called Pathway Connect, mm -hmm. I think, Worldwide Pathway Connect. It's a program that was started out of BYU-Idaho that um, you study for a year, you get five credits every semester. BYU-Idaho has three semesters, so you ended up, end up with 15. You do three credits of um, either language or financial skills, life skills, and two credits of a religion. So you have two classes and it's this one-year program to kind of get people back into school, prepare them for life, prepare them for education. It's meant for those who are coming to education after a long break, for those who never got education, wanted to, and this is after all the kids, you know, and after they got their husband through uh, education, they're finally in their 40s, 50s, are deciding to go to school. And they have no idea what to expect. So this is like a good program to kind of get start people, get them started. Um, for me, it was a good way because it's super cheap. I think it's like $71 per credit. And if you graduate that one year with an 
A or a B, you are automatically in BYU Idaho. So it's really easy. And then the fantastic thing about it was that once you're in BYU Idaho and you're doing it online, that $71 per credit stays. So you're paying so little for education. And I calculated, I think my tuition never went over $852, $852. A what? A, a semester? Per semester. Wow, that's cheap. Incredible. And so at some point I took 16 credits, but you don't pay for more than 12. Mm -hmm. So you end up taking all these credits that are free. Mm -hmm. So for all that financial aspect, coming back from failing twice was incredibly important to me. And around the same time, um, I was doing Pathway and I met, uh, I got connected with a mentor. And, you know, I was thinking, okay, like after political science, like let me see what other programs like BYU-Idaho has that I could do online. And they didn't exactly have what I wanted. But while I was doing Pathway, my mentor said to me, you are a software engineer. Like the way you think, the way you process information, you would be fantastic at this mm. and you know i'm coming all of the liberal arts you can think of like the none of the computer stuff is on my mind i'm clueless mm -hmm. i can barely use my mac like you know 10 percent of what it's capable of so i uh, within that year i kind of got used to that thought of let me try it let me try it and i ended up going into cat which is computer information technology and the last year, I actually switched to web design and development. So I graduated in web design and development with an emphasis on development. And did you move to Rexburg at some point? I I did. Well, I moved to Idaho Falls, but not because I had to. So actually, I ended up doing, like, so I was in BYU-Idaho for two and a half years, I think. And I did homework. From Texas, though. Yeah. Okay. I did homework in Austin. Austin, Dallas, New York, New York City, meaning um, Idaho Falls, Salt Lake City. Like, mm -hmm. I was all over the place. Yeah. At some point, I was in, in San Francisco. Like, it was the map. And this is what was really great about uh, online and Pathway and all of that is I had the flexibility of traveling and moving and following like my family ended up moving to utah and some of my family was in idaho so i ended up moving and it was great that it, i had that flexibility to go with my family yeah yeah it's, i mean it sounds like an inspired program like it sounds like it really was it's cheap and it's it's a solid education and it's flexible yeah i mean it sounds like it really helped your life i got really lucky with all of my instructors, I don't have, I don't think I had like a lot of very like negative experiences if I had any at all. But yeah, I got really lucky. Um, I did learn a lot. I came from, like I said, I didn't know anything about programming and like writing my little JavaScript and like trying to get, you know, X plus two equals whatever, <laughs> like get it to work. That was so funny. Um, but... Yes, it was an inspired program. And BYU-Idaho was the first time in my life that I felt I am converted to the gospel. Really? Yes. So how did it so, convert you? I think education in general is incredibly inspiring. You're learning so many things so quickly. And I loved what I was doing. I was like in such a good place. I was safe. I was doing what I wanted to do. I was finally like getting things done that I had been wanting to do for a long time. So it's just like generally like I kind of, if it's right to say, like I fell into myself. I felt whole and complete and there I was doing what I wanted. And, and of course, part of BYU-Idaho, you have to do religious classes. So every semester I had like, you know, studying Book of Mormon or prophets or whatever. And even if you're just studying computers, you still have a bunch of religious topics that you end up covering in those classes anyway. And like you have these open forums with other students where you can discuss your faith and like your journey, like all of these wonderful things. So I ended up having every semester I had a great community. I had people to talk to. I had things I, had to, I could do and had to do. And I was, oh, with my sisters or my mom, I just had a great time. And I think all of it ended up 
giving me that final push and I just felt oh my gosh I'm finally in it even though it wasn't the conversion to the organization like I was saying before like it wasn't like oh my gosh I'm so converted I'm gonna go to the to church every Sunday forever for the rest of my life that's not how I felt what I felt was I finally had a 100% connection with the divine 100% of the time I always felt like my answer my questions were answered um, and I felt comfortable praying without kneeling necessarily right so I just always felt this there's something there I'm completely connected to it I am one with the universe that was the feeling that I got as a converted person and that yeah. happened just a couple of years ago yeah this happened within the last two years oh my goodness mm -hmm. and that was once you moved here yep to what Utah Idaho uh, Idaho oh. yeah I think Idaho was the first one where I was just like oh okay this is it. All right. So, yeah. so, and, and I think that, you know, I, I think it's, you know, we want to acknowledge that the church values education and, and wants to do good things and help people get educated. I think there's also a, a strategy there. I think when they chose to do pathways where it's probably a, a decent uh, recruiting slash conversion tool to get people um, educated, but also to give people value in their lives so that they value the church. Um, and so there's probably some, something really smart and strategic about their creation of that program. And it sounds like it worked for you. 100%. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a great tool. Yeah. I loved it. Okay. I, s I have no regrets. Absolutely none. It was so great. So did you ever actually attend the BYU-Idaho campus or not? Yes, I did go. So I actually ended up living with a, you know, like BYU-Idaho. They have a bunch of little singles words there. And the person, the people I was living with uh, was a bishop. And so I, in Rexburg. And so sometimes I would go with him and I would go to the Spory building. And they had an, they have an amazing lab with like the latest technology and I would work on my like illustrator and Adobe designs and things like that. So I ended up uh, attending just to be able to use the tools that were available. That was fun. And so when you graduated, were you in Rexburg when you graduated? From I graduated in Holiday, Utah. Oh, okay. That's where yeah. we are now. That's where we are now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Right here. Okay. So you got that degree. I did. I just got in the mail not so long ago, like a month ago, I got in mail. So like age 33, you got yes. that bachelor's degree and I it's in finally did it. computer and web stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, and then while you're living here in holiday, you've been here how long? A year. Okay. You've been attending what, a singles ward here? A YSA up in, um, I think it's just called holiday YSA actually. Okay. Yeah. And you've been having a good experience. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this gets us to the point where, um, so I mean, like, I mean, I, I guess there are two things I wanted to say. The first is that, uh, you know, we're going to talk about your faith journey in just a second, but uh, a lot of people, you know, when people, a lot of people that I work with are progressive or post-Mormons who are maybe somehow angry at the church or mad or frustrated or sad, they feel lied to, or they are mad at the church's patriarchy or it's racism or it's sexism or homophobia or it's lack of transparency about history. And so they, because they're mad at the church for one of those reasons, they tend to just uh, be unwilling to admit that the church does good things or is good in many ways. And instead it's just, there's often an attitude like, Oh, it's a cult and destroy the church. It's bad. And it needs to be destroyed. And um, a lot of people, a lot of people with me are like, well, John, how can you be so positive with the church after they've hurt you so bad? Or how can you not hate the church? They excommunicated you and you know all the bad stuff. And they're always surprised when I'm kind of positive about the church. And and one of the main reasons I stay positive about many aspects of the church is because I truly believe that there are a lot of people the church actually helps. And particularly it's people who are in either um, developing countries or, you know, whatever the difference is between it, whatever is in the middle between a developing country and like, let's just say a G8 kind of, you know, country, you know, one of the leading economic countries in the world. It just, it can provide people with community and identity and meaning and morality and purpose and spirituality. And, and in this case, in education, financial support, like that's really good. That's really valuable. And it sounds like the church 
was super valuable for you, helping you go from a maybe a somewhat abusive home or an abusive home where financially things were rough to coming to the United States to now being tri or whatever lingual, lots of languages, to now having a, a, a bachelor's degree and kind of the world's your oyster. So like, I guess, I guess I'm asking you if, if it's right to just sort of say the Mormon church really blessed your life. True. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And you, and you, and you probably, so when you think about, when you think back to you, Ukrainians joining the church or Russians or Eastern Europeans, and we'll get to your, your developing faith and, and your challenges with it. But, but I guess you can sort of bear testimony that the church is a very positive influence in the life of, of people outside the U S or it can be. It can be. Yes. I think it's a, it's a tool and you, and you can be really smart at using it to the top of its um, ability to provide because church does provide so many things and it definitely did provide a lot of things for me. I have no regrets and no anger. I don't think I ever did. Um, and yeah, no, never. And so... But not just no regrets, tons of gratitude, right? Yeah. For the role of the church in your life. And I still, I'm not, I'm not trying to live my life without it because it is a huge part of my family. Like all of mom, my sisters, her husbands, like they're the kids, they're, they're all in the church. And so to me, I'm not like out, I don't live a separate life. Like I don't consider myself, yeah. you know? And we'll get to that. Okay. But like, if somebody says to you, "Ah, oh, the church is bad and it needs to go away," you would say what? Uh, no, no, let's let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> let's not do that at all. Because then we're cutting off education for like thousands, thousands of people, hundreds of thousands. Yeah, but um, yes, like the growth of Pathway has been insane, insane. Like their growth rates, and they are helping so many people. I just no, let's not cut off people's lives like that. It's not necessary. We all have agency and we're all allowed to make our choices and let's let, let's let other people make their choices. And it's not just the education. It's whatever your Bishop's mom storehouse used it a couple of times. Loved it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And whatever value your mom got from it. I'm sure you're, I mean, I met your mom. She, yeah, she loves the church. Yes. And I'm sure she would say the church has been a phenomenally positive influence in her life. Yeah. Right. It, she had always wanted to be a teacher and church gave her that opportunity to grow as a teacher and be a teacher and have that status and have the opportunity. And I mean, she just, she lives in it. She loves it so much. Yeah. And I love it. Right. I mean, she, she literally is the best teacher I have ever had. Mm, that's she so really great. is. That's yeah. so great. So that all, that all sounds just like, um, I mean, I was expecting at some point maybe for it to go bad or sour, but it sounds like kind of the Mormon Ukrainian dream up until recently, right? Like yeah. everything pretty amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, a couple bumps of the bishop here and there, whatever, yeah. but a good experience. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I know. It's like now that I even think about it, I'm like, I, I wonder. Yeah. It's been all, it's mostly been really great. It's been very helpful. So like if the missionaries had not bumped into your parents on the bus and you hadn't joined the church. I wonder if you can even imagine thinking about some of your other peers or what the average Ukrainian experience is like. Yeah. How different your life would be, your mom's life, your sister's life would be having not, I don't even know if you can guess that. Maybe it'd be better. I don't know, but. I don't know. I have, because of the, ch thanks to the church, I was exposed to a different way of living, different culture very, very early on. And that gave me a different kind of growth and opportunities to gain wisdom in different ways. It really made me who I am and how I think, you know, gave me these different perspectives and angles. And I can't imagine what my life would be like otherwise. Like, yeah, no, I don't want that. <laughs> So here you have it first on Mormon Stories, somebody bearing their testimony about how good the church was for them and how much they love it. 
Uh, I'll take it. Uh, that's your that's your story.